so it's interesting, Jay Powell uh, sounding super dovish, stock still dropped the most since October. It's interesting that he said that the correlation between asset prices and liquidity and monetary policy settings is perhaps not as tightly correlated as some would say so. Would you agree with him? Well, yes, uh, over the very short run. I mean, over the medium term, and I think the broader framework is still quite supportive for risk assets. We're early in this cycle. I mean, we're just approaching a point where hopefully economies are coming out of a very deep recession. And the fact that major central banks, the Fed in particular, are prepared to give such aggressive forward guidance with rates at zero and effectively real rates uh, quite negative, you know, it is going to be a support for the broad uh, cyclical recovery, which we're expecting. On the other hand, over very short periods of time, I think that, that, that these two things are not necessarily correlated. And some of the indicators that we look at, positioning, um, uh, confidence indicators, looking at the way that markets have moved between risky and less risky assets across different asset classes, did suggest that there was quite a lot of vulnerability to a short-term correction. And I think that's what's really uh, coming through. I've got to get you to weigh in on GameStop, AMC, where the action really was overnight. A lot have pitched this as a David and Goliath, you know, democratization of, of market access type story. Where do you weigh in? And does it really reveal some of the, the, the fractured and maybe dysfunctional aspects of this market? Is there a real threat for hedge funds on this? Well, I think, again, I, I wouldn't comment on the specific companies. I don't have a particular view on that. But what, what I would say is that, you know, we have got an environment where the cost of capital is around zero. Real interest rates are negative. Uh, you have got lots of people who are getting checks in the post uh, as a reflection of the uh, very successful fiscal policies to uh, stabilise growth uh, during this downturn. And, and that is leading to, uh, you know, speculative behaviour in certain areas. But uh, I do think that that doesn't uh, necessarily fit with the broader market developments themselves, which I think are quite reflective of the fundamentals. You know, we have seen a very sharp rebound in broader equity indices from the March lows. But actually, over the last nine months, that recovery has been almost identical to the one that we saw from the trough in 2009. And when you think about the policy setting, this aggressive uh, monetary policy easing for guidance, and on top of that, the fiscal easing that we're seeing, with the prospects of a very strong economic recovery coming out of this downturn, I think that's fundamentally what's supporting broader equities. Now, there may be areas of excess within the equity market and other asset classes too, but I don't think we're uh, seeing a bubble in, in overall um, uh, uh, broader, broader indices. I think they're quite reflective of the fundamentals. Peter, what about in those areas of excess? Could that volatility filter through through the broader markets, especially now that we have this newfound power of retail traders? Yeah, I mean, and it is interesting that volatility is remaining actually quite high, even in the recent period where markets were rising quite strongly. Um, but I would say... Again, uh, you know, in, in, in our framework, what we're really seeing here is a broad transition from the first phase of a bull market, which nearly always starts during a recession when profits are actually falling. And that's why that first phase of a bull market tends to be driven by sharply rising valuations, just as we've seen over the last six to nine months. And then we tend to move into a phase that we call the growth phase, where most of the profits actually emerge. That transition between the two tends to be associated with higher volatility and often a setback um, as investors start to doubt the recovery that they've begun to price in. And right now, of course, we have a particular struggle between concerns of further lockdowns and rising infection rates with the... Uh, optimism that in vaccinations and the rollout of those will create a strong rebound as economies finally open up. Uh, and I think that there's been some vulnerability in the very short run that the optimism about vaccines uh, would be questioned. And I think that's really what's going on right now.
then if investors should be buying in right now with the weakness, with the volatility as a buying opportunity, getting to the markets, where would they go and find opportunities for that cyclical rally that you think still has room to run? Yeah, again, I think here this is the, 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 the trade-off between the short-term tactical and positioning factors and liquidity and then the more fundamental ones. So I think markets uh, were vulnerable to, to a setback given some of the positioning and sentiment data that we monitor. But we still believe we're going into a strong economic and profit recovery. Our own views are that we're going to see global growth of around 6.5% this year and 4.5% into, into next year. That's way above the consensus. We're looking at global profit growth of roughly 35%. I still think that's going to drive markets higher from this setback. Uh, and this, I think, should be seen as a correction in a new equity cycle. And it's likely that that recovery, when it comes back again, will be led by more cyclical and value parts of the market, which have got much more leverage to uh, a pickup in world trade growth and economic growth, and which are also uh, cheaper in, in the market broader context. So that's where we're really looking at most of the opportunities.